The big advantage of geosynchronous satellites is that you only need three satellites to cover the whole Earth. Three. Three. Because the Earth is a sphere and you put the satellite kind of way out here and it can almost see half the Earth. So you just need three with the overlap and you can cover the whole Earth except maybe the poles with just three satellites. So that's pretty good. With low Earth orbit, you end out needing hundreds, thousands of years trying to do really high bandwidth stuff. SpaceX, 6,000 satellites. Project Kuiper from Amazon is talking about doing 3,000. The other thing about them is that because they're orbiting the Earth at the exact speed the Earth is rotating, they appear to not move in the sky. As the seasons change, they drift north and south a little bit, a little bit up and down, but not side to side. They stay at the same spot, so you can point a dish right at them. So you can get really great performance out of a fairly cheap dish, as long as you get it pointed right at that satellite, and it'll stay in the same spot for months or years. So in low Earth orbit, they're just whizzing by, so you can't point an antenna at them. So what they do is they need to use phased arrays. So if you look at that dish that Starlink gives you, it's not actually a dish. It's an array of over 1,200 little omnidirectional antennas that they then use software to combine the signals in a clever way to make them emulate being a dish that's following the path of the satellite. And that lets you get the great performance you're looking for. MIMO. MIMO. That's exactly right. Multiple inputs, multiple outputs. So why use low Earth orbit? Well, latency. The low Earth orbit satellites are only a couple hundred miles up where the geosynchronous orbit ones are 26,000 miles away. They're 100 times closer. When you bounce a message off a satellite, you're limited by the speed of light. It doesn't take very long for light to bounce off them and back down to a nearby base station. But when you go geosynchronous, that satellite's 26,000 miles away. So even at the speed of light, that takes 120 milliseconds to get there. Doesn't sound so terrible. But then you have to bounce the signal back to the base station on Earth, so that's another 120 milliseconds. And whoever you sent the message to answers you, it takes 120 milliseconds to get back to the satellite, another 120 milliseconds to bounce off. You're at half a second just bouncing messages off the geosynchronous satellite, and then there's the latency of going across the internet and doing whatever you need to do. So there's just no physical way for these geosynchronous satellites to ever get their latency down to 500 milliseconds. So stuff like gaming, video calls, they're a problem. 500 milliseconds, that makes people trying to do a video call keep interrupting each other by accident. And you can't play most online games with half a second ping. Not if you want to win. So how much of a concern is space junk with low Earth orbit satellites? It's a big concern. NASA's estimated that there's 34,000 pieces of large junk in orbit and more than 100 million pieces a centimeter or smaller. And those sound like tiny things, but if they hit you moving a couple thousand miles an hour, which is the speeds we're talking about, that's a bullet. That does real damage. So it's a serious problem. SpaceX said in a six-month period, their satellites 25,000 times had to dodge to avoid pieces of junk that they were coming up on. It's like getting towards the critical mass where everything goes wrong. And there's this Kessler syndrome idea that if a satellite hits a piece of junk and explodes into pieces, there's now so many satellites that those pieces will hit other satellites, which will explode into pieces. And next thing you know, Earth orbit is just full of garbage flying around thousands of miles an hour and humanity is unable to use space for a few decades. But progress is being made. Amazon's Kuiper has signed a zero space junk pledge that they won't leave any junk in orbit. I don't think SpaceX has signed it yet, but they're really doing a good job. They are being responsible. They go up, they bring the rockets back down. At the end of five years, when the satellites are wearing out, they purposely crash down and burn up in the atmosphere. So those two are really doing a nice job of taking their responsibility seriously and keeping their orbits clean because they realize they're going to be long-term citizens. One player that appears to be not being responsible at all is the Chinese. They have their thousand sales initiative where they're putting up 14,000 satellites with a thousand rockets. And then they're just leaving the upper stage of the rockets in orbit. Those rocket parts are not small debris. <laughs> they're not small debris. And current estimates are that these giant pieces of junk weighing hundreds of pounds are going to stay in orbit for a hundred years. And if they're going to be sloppy, it's going to be a problem for everyone, including themselves. So that's really dangerous. Now, even even though SpaceX is being responsible and bringing everything down, there's starting to be a lot of stuff coming down. So they have 6,000 satellites and each satellite lasts five years. That means like 1,200 satellites a year they plan to bring back down. Now, when you say bring back down, you mean burning up aluminum vapors in the atmosphere. Right? Yes, yes. <laughs> what the satellite does is it saves a little bit of rocket fuel to actually slow itself down. And once it slows itself down, it drops into a lower orbit where there's more friction from the air. And then it slows down more and drops faster and faster and ends up burning up coming down, which means, as some people have pointed out, they're leaving vaporized aluminum in the ozone layer. What does that do? 
Nobody knows. Maybe it's good. I doubt it, though. So there's an awful lot of vaporized metal being left up in the stratosphere in places where you never had metal before. A little worried as far as what that will do. There's also some concerns. There's so many coming down. At what point do they become a danger to airplanes? The odds of them hitting you on the ground are pretty low, but I think the odds of them hitting an airplane start getting a little higher. We've had to close airports recently when SpaceX rockets exploded on launch. You had to mm-hmm. clear all the airplanes out of the area to make sure the pieces of junk coming down don't hit one of them. So a little bit of concern, right? You got thousands of satellites. I mean, you would hit 2,000 satellites a year coming down once Kuiper is up as well. I would assume the satellites are small enough and flimsy enough that they disintegrate far above where an airplane would be. I'm not sure that's true. They're like 1,200 pounds. There have been a couple cases of a couple pieces hitting the ground or some farmer's house that thought he'd been hit by a meteor and turned out to be a piece of a SpaceX satellite. I think not much is hitting the ground, but if you're flying at 20, 30,000 feet, yeah, I think, those are bigger pieces. I think there's still bigger pieces up there. And they're very hot. They're very hot. So the truth is, I don't think whether they're responsible or not comes really down to whether they're like good people or not. It's whether or not they think they're going to be in the business for the long term. Starlink, their plan is to be doing satellite internet from low Earth orbit. 30 years. Amazon, same plan. I have a suspicion what's going on with the Chinese is that there are a bunch of people who have to hit some deadline. They have guaranteed they will have satellites in space and worry about the future later because they must hit the deadlines they're committed to. Once they hit that, they'll realize they have an issue and suddenly become responsible when it feels like less of a race and more of a realization that they're citizens of the shared world and or they own this orbit and now they have to keep their orbit free of junk or they'll be destroying mm-hmm. their own satellites, right? Yeah, like whether or not SpaceX cares about pollution. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, but the point is they definitely care about their satellites being smashed by space junk. Even (laughs) if it's their own space junk. Even if it's their own space junk. Which of these types of satellites does Speedify work with? All of them. Anything that looks like an internet connection, Speedify will use. We have lots of users on Starlink. We have users using the VSAT services off the geosynchronous satellites too, and that works. Of course, there's that latency. So if you try to use both at once, Speedify will almost always decide, I'm just going to use the Starlink because latency is so much lower. I don't want to put up with it. But now there's some interesting hints, right? We've got the jitter buffer feature where you can, in fact, tell Speedify that for certain streams, you care more about consistency than low latency. And you can tell it, just make sure I get the packets within 700 milliseconds. And now it knows it's perfectly fine to send it over that geosynchronous 500 milliseconds link. And so it can use all the connections at the same time. It'll really give you the speed of all of them added up and give you perfectly consistent speed. Even if one satellite goes out, the other goes out, as long as one of them's still working and its latency is lower than that level you gave it, everything just seems perfectly smooth. But if you really want low latency, <laughs> avoid the geosynchronous satellites. Yeah, I guess they're good for like video. Yeah. Down if it's not a two-way conversation, this is why I like Dish Network, when you get the TV channels over the satellite, what do you care? Is it delayed by two seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds? Unless it's live sports like the Super Bowl and you can hear your neighbors cheering before you see the guy hit the end zone. You don't really know. And so that kind of thing is perfectly fine for geosynchronous. We have the best discussion about 5G, so hit subscribe.